All right, so base building. All right, it breaks down into two really large gameplay sections, planning ahead and prepping, um, and then you've got the on-site where you're actually going to build. So with that, you need to figure out what your goal is. Is it to have a home with a nice view and relax? Is it to have a trading post where you want to create and sell items? Is it to gather resources available and move on to the next area? Or is it to be off-grid and be completely self-sufficient? Yep. So with that, with your prep and everything like that, we've got blueprints. So the, the recipes, everything in the game is fabricated from a blueprint. Players acquire blueprints via reputation rewards, um, missions, or rare NPCs. With any blueprint, you can actually do research on it and then create different variations. With materials ranging from the common to ultra rare, you might find them at the local shop or have to travel around the universe to collect them. Unrefined, refined, simple materials, or even complex components will all go into the fabrication. With this, then you've got location, location, location. First area is high security, so you must purchase the land. The base is actually invulnerable because the planetary shield tech, a security will show up to protect it as well. You pay for the privilege, you're taxed. So at this point, um, you won't have the best resources available. You won't have access to the best resources available on the planet. If you don't pay your taxes, the shields will go away after a period of time, and the base will become derelict and will collapse. But this is low risk, low reward. Then you've got low security. So again, you must purchase the land. It's owned by an independent corp, gang, or faction. Again, you don't have access to all the best resources on the planet. The base is vulnerable. AI NPCs will show up and protect the base if it's attacked. The protection will escalate. Um, over time. Player can also build defenses to help mitigate this as well, and then it's medium reward, medium risk. Then you've got lawless. So this is no protection other than what you build. There's shields, anti-air. Players can disable the shields by getting close to them and destroying them. High risk, high reward. Since there's no taxes, no protection fees, you get a high return on the resources that you collect. Now, there's some cross shard and server meshing considerations that will we'll kind of adjust this design in the future, but we'll get into that later once, we, once we're really building it. So from here, you've got the tools. So this is what we consider a surveyor. Um, with this, we want to actually cater to everybody's play style, whether you're solo or in an org. With this, you've got different buildings that you can produce, from small, medium to large, to extra L or XL. So with the surveyor tool, you can only build the small buildings. With a vehicle, you can build small and medium-sized buildings. With the galaxy, you can build small to large structures. And then obviously with the Pioneer, Pioneer can do it all. And it still works as a mobile base. And we'll uh, talk about some of the more expanded features that we're adding to it in, in later on. So, um, and then it's also, we're exploring what can be done in space, not just on the planet. So from here, you set off on your journey. So with the land claim, you put your tool down where you want, you launch the drone that is built into the machine, and then from there, this allows the player to access the base building and also land claim mode. With the land claim modes, the player can actually change the size and position of what, what area they want to claim, and it also shows you the cost and taxes associated with it. If it's in a taxable zone and you don't own the land, this interface will default to it. So if you own land or it's in the lawless area, it will automatically go to base building mode. So with the overhead view of the land, you can actually place down buildings exactly where you want. You can see the resources beneath the surface. And then you can also place multiple buildings before you actually build. So you can see how it will all kind of come together. You'll see the resources that are needed for it. And then you can also switch back and forth between different modes, which are showing off the resource network and, and how you link basically power generators to consumers. And then the player can move or deconstruct existing buildings right now with no charge. Fabrication. So when you, when you, 
basically build these buildings. They don't come with any furnishings. And if you, did, and if you didn't bring any with you, then you want to build a fabricator. So depending on uh, what you want to build, there's different sizes of them that support buildings from decorations, armor, weapons, components, and even ships. So like base building mode, you need blueprints, resources to craft what you want. Everything fabricated is produced from a, it produces a physicalized entity. Stats and quality will depend on the quality of the materials actually used. Once you've done that and you've built your decorations, now you can actually fill the room the way that you want to fill it. So furnishings can be purchased at different locations or they can actually be fabricated. You can do that via first person or in a dedicated mode in the surveyor's tool. With that, you've got different types of buildings. So you've got utility style, which would be garages, freight elevators, landing pads, storefronts. And then you've got extractors. So with, re with extractors, we want to make sure that nothing in regards to resource gathering is fully automated. A, player, a level of player engagement is always needed. So as Nick talked about before, there are different types of commodities, radioactive, perishable, et cetera. What you'll be doing is pulling out full containers, then from there it'll be repairing, or there's wear and tear associated with it, or even misfires like you saw in Thorsten's talk and Guillermo's talk yesterday. There's also upgrade paths for making them more efficient or resilient. Power generators. So with different types of power generators, there, there'll be some that are more cost effective as well as effective in different areas. Solar panels will not always work in darkness. Fuel generators will need to be filled up every now and then, and then batteries to store excess power. Then you've got producers. So things that will require the players to combine different resources to produce new items. And then you've got defense. So anti-air, anti-personnel, and then shield generators. And then the big one, we start development Q1. So that's me. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. It's wonderful to see you.